Welcome back everyone. Today we are going to start our blue light journey and I am so excited to be doing this today. Okay, so today we're going to talk about blue lights. What is it? What does it do? Where does it come from? How do we limit it? How do we recover from it? And really, is it all that bad? Today on Jennifer's Journal. All right, so what is blue light? Well, it is on the visible spectrum, so we can see it. It is a short wavelength light, so 480 nanometers, and it has a high energy output. So nature has a limited amount of blue light. If nature doesn't like it very much, why do we put it in everything? Okay, it's everywhere. I guess here my cha my challenge to you is this. Next time you go for a walk, next time you go for a hike, next time you're in nature, look around and see how much is blue. Well, you might say, Jennifer, the sky is blue, the ocean's blue. And I would say to you, is it really blue? Or is it just appear to be blue? So the sky appears to be blue because when all the colors of the sun pass through our atmosphere, the longer wavelengths, they penetrate down. They come through the atmosphere. The blue light, it scatters everywhere. We're giving the sky the appearance of being blue, but technically it's not really blue. Just like with our ocean, our ocean is not blue. Pure water does have a blue tint to it, but the ocean water is not pure water, okay? So what happens when the sun rays come through our atmosphere and it hits the ocean water, the longer lengths absorb into the water, okay? The blue light is not a long length. It is a short wavelength of light. So it actually will scatter and it reflects back into our eyes. So when we're at the ocean, we're actually getting a double dose of blue, okay? Because we're getting it from the sun and we're also getting the reflection back from the water. So in nature, there's some flowers, insects, fish, and birds that are blue or have blue in them. But for blue in nature, that's about it. Green, on the other hand, is a lot in nature. And green has a different effect on our bodies than blue does. It's just something to kind of think about. Okay? So what exactly does blue do to us? Why is this so bad? Well... First and foremost, blue suppresses the secretion of melatonin. Melatonin is what makes us tired. It's what tells us to go to bed. It helps us fall asleep. It helps us stay asleep. So melatonin is very important, okay? And research has shown that as little as eight lux of light at night can cause a sleep disturbance, okay? Night lights are anywhere between 0.1 and 10 luxes, okay? Remember, these lux add up. Okay, so if you have four or five things in your bedroom, like think indicator lights, you know, the light that's on your charging port, the light, that little light that tells you your TV's turned off because you need that, that little light on your air purifier and that's, and that street light coming in from outside. All those lux add up and they affect you when you sleep. Okay, so a study show that blue light um, shifts our circadian rhythm by three hours. Okay, and green light by an hour and a half. So if blue light is shifting our circadian biology by three hours and, and green light by one and a half, why is everything blue? Why don't we switch over to green? Just, I don't know, just a question. And for the most of us, most of us have to get up at the same time regardless of when we go to sleep. So we're just really tired, grumpy people. So we're just really tired and grumpy, right? Because we're staying up because we're watching TV, we're on our phones, we're on our tablets. We have all these indicator lights in our room that's disturbing our sleep. And, but we have to get up at the same time. So we're just really grumpy people. And all this kind of snowballs and our bodies are just not able to use insulin correctly. Um, and 
It has been proven that small amounts of blue light can alter our blood glucose levels by affecting how we metabolize glucose. So, meaning our bodies can't control our blood sugar with insulin. So, we're tired, we're grumpy, we're moody, and now we can't control our insulin. So, this starts to activate the synthetic nervous system, which affects our insulin levels even more, pushing us towards insulin resistant. And we all know that insulin resistance is just a hop, skip away from type 2 diabetes. So our body is completely confused. Our insulin is going nuts. Blue light is increasing our heart rates and reducing our heart rate variability while we sleep. And it's just pushing us closer to diabetes and a heart attack all at the same time. So think about everything that you have in your room that emits blue light while you sleep. From now on, those things need to be turned off. Blue light also affects our appetite by altering the balance and reeling, which increases the sh our hunger, and by altering leptin, which promotes our hunger. So our bodies are always feeling hungry, our brain's not getting the message that we've just eaten and we shouldn't be hungry anymore. And blue light is doing all of this, and that affects our insulin even more, putting us even further closer to insulin resistance. So not only is it giving us diabetes and giving us a heart attack, it's making us fat. All this while we sleep. Because we decided to watch that movie after dark before we went to bed. So this just furthers the being tired, the grumpy. We start eating a lot of sugar. We start drinking a lot of caffeine just because we want to be able to get through our day. And it's just so hard. And it just becomes this vicious cycle that we can't get out of it. And then we start having anxiety and depression. All because it started because we are sleep deprived because we're on our phones or watching TV at night. So science leads us to believe that it's not blue light that's addictive. It's the content. I'm sorry, I disagree with that. Because the content when I was a kid was far more engaging and I was able to turn the TV off. Now the content's far less engaging, and if I'm not wearing my blue blocking glasses, then I don't ever want to get off the couch and get up away from the TV or put my phone away. So I don't think it's the content. I think it's the light. So blue light has a huge impact on our hormones. Okay, our sleep hormone, it affects our insulin. It also affects our sex hormones through the pineal gland that releases FH, FHH and LH, that starts to go into the territory as blue light directly linked to endometriosis and PCOS and other reproductive problems that are plaguing this world. So where does all this blue light come from? We've established that it comes from the sun. You are never going to get blue light in isolation in nature ever. It's only in artificial lit worlds where it becomes an isolation through fluorescent lighting and the LED lights and all the screens and all those indicator lights that are on all of our appliances and electronics and everything you can think of. The billboards, the street lights outside, they are all blue lights. Headlights in other people's cars are all blue. All under the skies of saving money, being cost efficient, but yet our bills never go down and things just keep going up and up and up, regardless of how green we become. We not only have blue light detectors in our retina, but we also have it on our skin called melanopsin. Melanopsin is a blue light detector, so it is affecting us because remember blue light is high energy output. It doesn't penetrate as deep as say red light, but it does penetrate and it is a shorter wavelength, so it has higher energy output. So what is all that energy doing when it gets into our bodies? Well, I'll tell you what it's doing. It's messing up. It's messing with our pineal gland through our sleep. It messes up our circadian rhythms. We can't sleep. It messes up our sex hormones, so we develop, you know, um, hormonal issues. It's, it's affecting our insulin levels, so we start getting all these autoimmune diseases like it's directly affecting our mitochondrial health at that point. So 
we can't avoid blue light because it is everywhere, but how can we reduce it? Well, personally, I try to avoid it at all costs. Um, when it's dark outside, I try to keep it dark in my house. I do use blue blocking glasses, which is what I'm wearing. I have a blue blocking app on my phone, so my screen is red. I use red light at night. I sit underneath the red light, especially if I didn't have a good sunset or a good sunrise or I missed it because unfortunately I have a day job. I unplug anything that emits light at night that I do not need to use, such as my Wi-Fi router, charging blocks that I'm not using, anything with the indication light, like my air purifier, I use that at night. It has an indicator light that is bright, so I put um, a black t-shirt over it so I can't see the light. I have really dark curtains on my windows to drown out all that light outside from a street light that I can't control. You could also wear an eye mask. I, I have a thing with wearing something around my face at night. I can't do it. But you need to make your sleeping environment as dark as you possibly can. You can also use other color lights. It's actually kind of fun. Yellow, amber, red. Um, incandescents are coming back. Yay. Um, but again, use them sparingly. Incandescents have all the colors in them. So the blue is more balanced, but the new incandescents could be heavier blue than it needs to be. I don't know. I'm just saying. Could. I do like to use candles at night because I like to relax and meditate. So candles really help with that. Wear yellow, amber, or red clothes to help kind of absorb and counteract that blue. Go outside and see the sun as much as possible. Take sun breaks. Try and see the sunrise, see the sunset. I go outside and eat lunch at noon. Um, it's actually like 12.30, well, like 12.15. But I try to go outside and eat lunch. I try to, you know, poke my head out the door a few times a day just so my eyes can kind of connect with the sun and see what time it is. Because every time you look at a screen, you're telling your brain that it is 12 o'clock noon when it's not. So it's important for your eyes to see the sun throughout the day so your brain gets the message of what time it really is. Um, unplug anything that you're not using that has an indicator light on it, okay? So you can mitigate some of the blue light damage by, you know, blocking as much blue light as you possibly can. But going outside, um, just being in nature, going for walks, taking breaks, um, looking away from the screen as much as you can throughout the day if you're stuck in a room with a screen. You know, maybe turn the lights off in your office for a few minutes every now and again. Um, open your curtains, see the outside. Um, anything is better than nothing. Eat real foods that are grown locally to you. This is really important. Avoid processed sugary foods at all costs. I know that is hard because they taste so good, but they are so bad for you. Limit caffeine to the morning. I do drink coffee in the morning, but I limit that to the morning time because your body needs to recover from that caffeine intake. And it takes a while for that. So if I drink coffee like after six in the evening, I'm up all night. So, and your body will thank you by not giving you diabetes or a heart attack or some other terrible autoimmune disease. Embrace the cold. Um, I'm not saying go get hypothermia, but I am saying if it, you know if it's 50 degrees outside, go outside without a shirt for a few minutes. Enjoy the cold a little bit, if only for a few minutes a day. So sitting under a near infrared light, I think it's preferable. You don't have to get anything fancy. Just make sure it doesn't have a lot of flicker and that it doesn't emit a lot of EMFs, okay? Water is super important. So drink, drink, drink. Try and get good quality spring water, Icelandic water, volcanic water. Try and get something with a lower deuterium content um, because that is what your mitochondria need. In your mitochondria and your cells are made of 90% water. So drink a lot of water. Get exercise because exercise mitigates a lot. It, even blue light damage. It can help with insulin resistance. It can help get your circadian biology back on track. It can help do a lot. Just make sure that it is outside. 
make sure you go for a walk or a jog or a hike. You can even do interval training as you hike. That's actually really fun and it's a really big challenge sometimes. But get outside, get in nature, ground, look at the sun, don't be shy and get away and turn off your TVs and get away from your cell phones and your tablets. So I kind of ragged on blue light, but it's not all terrible. Blue lights timed at the right time and during the day when you're getting it from the sun and even in the morning, it can raise your cortisol levels, which can increase your concentration. Small bursts of blue light through the day can help you with your concentration levels. So one study states that 10 to 29 minutes of blue light can help your memory. Okay, so it's not all bad. But the amount of blue light in these studies is not for a long time and it's not a huge amount of blue lights. That is what's important. Research also states that blue light if continues to affect our brain function even after the exposure ends. So when you put your phone down, your tablet, or you turn off the TV, don't just turn it right back on. Give your brain a minute to realize that it's been turned off and so that it can go back to normal. Okay, so it can start functioning the way it needs to function. Be wary of all the blue light that you are exposing yourself to. Um, limit yourself to screens. Turn off your phone. Um, read a book. Go outside more. Use some blue blocking technology. Sit under red light. Block as much artificial light coming hitting your skin as you possibly can. Um, these are just some tips. If you have other tips, please feel free to share them with me. Any, I would love to hear your ideas on how you guys block blue light and how you feel about it. I know that my day looks a lot differently now than it did a year ago, and especially two, three, four years ago. I've had to make a lot of changes because I have some health issues. Like right now, I'm battling with insulin resistance. So my sugar is high all the time, and I don't know if blue light is the cause, but I'm going to start blocking it, and I'm going to let you know how it goes. So until next time, I hope you have a wonderful, healthy day, and I can't wait to see you again on Jennifer's Journal.